Hey guys, this is Kathy, aka A Cup of Kathy, and welcome back to The Good Tea, The Good Good Tea, The Good Tea with A Cup of Kathy. The Good Good Tea, yes, welcome back to The Good Tea. I know it's been a minute since I've done an episode of The Good Tea, but guess what guys, we are back, we are back, we are back. And a lot of things have been happening, but you guys know this is where we dissect what is happening, things that are trending, things that are happening and perhaps shows that we've seen and dissect the good tea. A lot of people come for the bad tea, but we dissect the good tea. And I'm your host, Kathy, aka A Cup of Kathy. Now, you guys know that I normally have the cup that says good vibes only, but as you guys know as well, or some of you may not know, I have recently become a mama. So today the cup is blessed mama. Uh-huh, that's me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's me. I'm a blessed mama. So today's show, we are going to be talking about the new Channel 4 show called High Life. Now, I wanted to discuss this because... I know that some people may have some bad things to say, some people may have some good things to say, but first and foremost, I just want to say shout out to C4, Channel 4, for doing High Life. It was part of their um, Black to Front day. It was 24 hours of pure black programming. And I'm so, so proud of that. I'm so happy to see that happen in the UK. Like everything from top to bottom was done by black creators, black producers, black people behind and in front of the camera. It was such a fantastic day full of amazing programming and I'm just so glad that it's happened and another thing that I'm really happy about was that it didn't happen during Black History Month I think that would have been so cliche so you know like Black History Month is for Black History we should be making the new history now and I feel like C4 did that with their Black to Front programming so shout out to C4 for that now to talk about one of the things that was programmed on that day was called high life now this is a documentary talking and showcasing the lives of successful black africans black british africans let's say so mainly it discussed um, nigerians and ghanaians like some young people that i say young i think all of them are pretty young in my opinion young people doing their thing in london in the uk just just doing their thing so it was very interesting because you guys, you know, we love to see things like that. I'm here for it. I'm here for challenging the perceptions that we have of normality, challenging the perceptions that black people are on estates, black people are this, black people are that. So these are successful, dare I say it, wealthy. I think some people come from wealthy families on the show. Some people have created their wealth, but these are well to do, like pretty you know doing really good. First and foremost, it's a documentary. So anybody who's thinking, oh, you know, It'll be X, Y, Z. It's a docu-series, so it has a bit of seriousness to it, but it's also just showcasing their lives. So I'm guessing it's a bit like, you know, um, how can I put it? Welcome to Lagos, if anybody remembers that um, documentary, meets Made in Chelsea. I think it's like a hybrid between those two. I think, I think I can put it that way. So basically, we follow these successful Nigerians and Ghanaians living their lives in London. Um, British, I say, British, British Nigerians, British Ghanaians living their lives in London. And I think it's a really, really good show from top to toe. It did take me a little while to get into it. But I think, again, it's not, it's not purely for our entertainment. It's not a show that is purely there to just say, hey, look at me. I'm such so amazing. They're not trying to create drama to get views but every single person showcased does have things happening and going on in their lives so the show follows um shifa to tomi um camille tony Kapi, kidwaya and irene those are the main cast of for the series and it was just lovely just getting um an insight into their lives and one of the first things that came up in the series was <laughs> Irene, Irene, mm, mm, mm. she was about to tell her mom that she's deciding to freeze her eggs. And listen, I thought this is literally the topics that we as Black British Africans or Black British people face on a daily basis. We are successful. We are doing our thing. We are, you know, living that dream that our parents wanted, even though it may not look like how they want. I know a lot of, you know, parents wanted um, successful Black um, doctors, successful black nurses and lawyers, things like that. That's what they wanted us to be. But people are here are living it on their own terms. They are doing that success thing. But what one thing Irene noticed was that, look, 
she hasn't met anybody yet she's not ready to become a parent so she wanted to freeze her eggs so we follow her doing all of that and i think it was so good for the program to show people making those kind of decisions people kind of having doing something different and it's it's very unheard of i had never even thought about that to be honest i had never thought you know should i freeze my eggs like i had never thought about that but look there's so much at your fingertips these days you don't have to just follow the line and the thing that is given to us so i thought that was lovely for that to showcase next up we have tommy and camille they were such a lovely couple they're just so heartwarming so like it's just nice to just see black love and i don't feel like the docuseries is trying to show it in a lovey dovey way to be like eh, just look at them even though tommy was like i did cry when i proposed and i was like go you for sharing that go you go you for telling the truth like i just thought that was lovely it's not trying to showcase this hyped up black masculinity it's like this is real i'm a black man and i cried when i proposed to my fiance i'm like yes 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 more of that more of that you know let's just be real with each other if you didn't cry you didn't cry but if you did why not showcase it next we have um chifa now chifa's story was very interesting to me oh and i forgot to mention bernicia at the beginning i'm so sorry bernicia is also part of the cast bernicia um so yeah so chifa <laughs> is a black jeweler a black luxury jeweler and i thought that was lovely to see he was you know taking up space in what is traditionally a white environment and actually one thing that i thought was almost made me not cry but it did hurt me in a way was the fact that he said that when he shows his jewelry online and things, he has to wear a glove because he doesn't want to lose clients when they see a black hand holding the jewelry and showing the diamonds and things like that. And I just thought, mm, that is so sad. Like, but again, that is the reality of the life we live in. And he said, you know, you know, I'm a proud black man. It's not that I want to hide my skin to him, but listen, I want to make that money, baby. I want to make that money, baby. <laughs> this is the reality. This is what um he has had to deal with like he's literally said that he has he has had people come to his store find out he's a black man and then make an excuse and go away sometimes they'll just be like mm, no i'm not interested anymore like just because of his skin color i mean what else would be the reason come on come on now what else would be the reason like what was the reason what was the reason what would be the reason apart from that nothing literally nothing would be the reason so shout out to him dominating taking up space in a place that is not traditionally you know that doesn't traditionally have many black people next up we have bernicia the boateng sisters and um, bernicia is the main cast but also her sister as well and her other sisters and her mom and dad first of all i love when they had the family meeting their dad is just such a typical ghanaian man in a good way not a bad way by the way but just like he had the little hat he had the jacket i was like yes uncle yes uncle represent uncle and god bless them i mean bernicia is a makeup artist she's very successful she's a makeup artist to the stars she you know she has her own studio but of course during lockdown things kind of went went a bit wayward you know they had to be closed for for lockdown because nobody was out of course and you know they, she wasn't getting bookings and things like that and her dad is actually the one who gave her twenty five thousand pounds to start her own um company to start the company and i thought it was so important that we heard that it was so important that we heard people say look my dad gave me £25,000 to support my dreams. Black people need to see things like this. For some people, it may be normal. My mom wasn't in, um, in a position to give me that much money for me to start anything. But it was lovely to see that, wow, like he's a dad supporting his daughter with what I think is a substantial amount of money for, I think she was 18 or 20 something at the time, very young. Um, so I think that was wonderful. And then it follows her story with her sister about whether they should do business again together or not. Um, I just thought it was lovely. I just thought it was lovely. You know, you, sh you, you just see them in, in their reality of their family, you know, sisters bickering back and forth. Um, you know, just the real life, real life. Do you know what I mean? Next up, we have Nigerians, Kapi and Kidwaya. I need to shout them out. I love Kapi. I have to give a special shout out to Kapi. She's a superstar. I love you, girlfriend. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy that you're on this show representing. Shout out to you. Many people don't know, but Kapi actually, when I released um, my cover for the MSARS program last year, my first kind of single, Kapi actually listened to it for me. She actually listened to it. She actually, um, you know, gave me her feedback. I wasn't able to take everything on board, but just the fact that she did that, I, I, I've got so much time for Kapi. She's a superstar. What you see is actually what you get. But it was interesting how her relationship with Kidwire played out. 
So there's a bit of a history between Kid Wire and Cuppy. And Kid Wire is another Nigerian doing big things. He was on Big Brother as well. You guys know that I was on Big Brother 2019 and he was on Big Brother 2020. So um, it's really amazing to see what everybody's up to after the show and things like that. So now their relationship is a bit rocky because according to Cuppy, Kid Wire has now been uh, become a whole new person, a whole new man after the show and he's he's different. That's what Cuppy believes. And Kidwire just says, no, I'm just evolving into the man that I am. Um, I'm evolving. I'm doing things differently. And I was pretty much, you know, um, on Cuppy's side. Like, she said that she saw him one, at one point throwing money out of a window. And she just thought that was ridiculous. Because Kidwire is also from a wealthy family. And she believes, you know, in not flaunting money in people's faces and actually being a philanthropist and helping people which is noble god I, I i love that i love that i love that and i'm here for it but then she made a comment about oh look at you you're dyeing your hair now and i'm like so <laughs> you have dyed hair as well you, you, your trademark is pink he has dyed his hair i can't even remember the color but that's okay so i was kind of like hmm is there a bit more to this than we know about because i wouldn't be angry at somebody because they've become famous now and they're now dyeing their hair. I mean, when, like for me, when I was catapulted into the spotlight, I would say, um, you do go through that phase where you just, everybody accuses you of being different and acting brand new because your life is different. Yes, I now have one point something million followers. Yes, my life is different, but it doesn't mean that I'm a different person. And I don't know if that is what is going on, like um, between Cuppy and Kidwai. There's more to it. And I'm sure as the, as the, episodes go on we're gonna find out a bit more we're gonna find out a bit more about what's going on there but it's just lovely obviously we came and saw Cuppy's penthouse her little dogs um just so much and it's just lovely to see again this is a young black woman doing her thing on her own terms and then Kid Wire, of course you know it's very into I want to see how this relationship plays out I want to see how whether they become friends again I want to see what happens that is what I want to see I mean it doesn't look very promising actually because the last part of the episode it showed Cuppy you know getting a bit angry and doing a little something something to Kid Wire but I'll let you guys watch the next episode to find out what that is but ultimately um it has been a really really nice thing to see this on TV to just see myself I actually sat down and watched this with my mum um it was so lovely she was like oh and even when <laughs> When about Irene, the ex, my mum was like, eh? Is that what she's going to say? What is her mum going to react? Um, I would say I would have loved to see so much more of Tony. I felt like we didn't get to see much of Tony in this episode. I'm hoping, again, this is a four-part series. I'm hoping we get to see more of her in the next series. She's actually Tommy's brother. I mean, Tony is actually Tommy's sister. So I know that they're a family, but Tony is a powerful woman in her own right, even before the show. So I would have loved to see so much more of her. So I'm hoping in the next episode, we get to see her a little bit more. Um, and also Camilla, it was really lovely to see Camille in the studio to doing her thing, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I would have wanted to see a bit more of Tony. So let's see if in the next episode that wish will be granted. But all in all, guys, I think C4 is a really great program. I'm you know, ready to watch. I'm going to be watching for the next episode. And also shout out to Google. Um, I think it was, is it the Google Pixel? I can't remember the number, but they are the ones supporting and sponsoring this. And it made me want to get a Pixel, honestly, because I just thought, you know what? Let them see that we, the black community, have buying power. Let them know. Let them know. I want Google Pixel sales to go up after this show, literally, because I'm like, yes, thank you for supporting. Thank you for backing this. Like, it's necessary. We need more of this. We are here. We're not going anywhere. We're the black community. And we're here for programming like this. So let me know what you guys thought. If you guys watched it, comment below. Let me know. Um, if you didn't, would you be interested in a show that's all about successful, black, beautiful people? Paul. And if so, catch up on it now. So thanks for watching, guys. Lots and lots of love. Um, yeah, keep watching and stay tuned. Bye. Hey guys, so first of all, I'm just going to put a nice quick disclaimer that I am running against time. I'm running against the light. I'm running for the sun. I'm running for the light before it sets. I'm just like Sean Paul saying, just give me the light. I'm past the low. Mm -mm. Do -do 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 -do. Just give me the light. Just give me the light. <laughs> anyway.